Friends, this is not a drill. We have our first look at the official It Is Actually Happening sequel to Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice! Beetle! My name is Matt and I have two degrees and that's right friends, the first teaser trailer for the sequel to Beetlejuice, also known as Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. It it was just released. I mean, the official Beetlejuice Facebook page was teasing that we were going to get a first look at the film this week, but then they went ahead and they released some production stills, some beautiful production stills, showing us Michael Keaton as well as the Dietz family, and I thought, okay, I guess that's it. But then today, just out of nowhere, we have the trailer. And I never thought I would see a legit Beetlejuice sequel in my lifetime. It's one of those projects that was just constantly announced and rumored, and Rumor has it. Actually, it's not even rumor. There was almost a Beetlejuice 2 that was made shortly after the original Beetlejuice came out. Listen to this. It was going to be called Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian, and it was seemingly exactly what the title suggests. Tim Burton thought it would be funny to mix up German expressionism, which kind of at least visually inspired the original Beetlejuice film, as well as most of Tim Burton's style, and like Annette Funicello and Frankie Beach... Hawaii musicals. Yeah, reportedly Tim Burton thought that would be funny because the two genres didn't go together at all, and I think the studio agreed, and <laughs> that's why they said, give us another Batman, we don't need more Beetlejuice. And at the time they were right. Beetlejuice had a good run, but now I think we're just at a point in time where, well, we know sequels and nostalgia sell, but also so many different elements have started trending again to make this a good time to bring back to Beetlejuice. You know, like, Catherine O'Hara's having a renaissance with Schitt's Creek, Tim Burton is having a renaissance with Wednesday, Beetlejuice as a franchise with the musical's popularity. Like, there are a ton of people who are invested in this, if they weren't invested just by merit of being a Beetlejuice fan. And, like, who isn't just a Beetlejuice fan? So anyway, we have a trailer, which can only mean one thing. It's time for another classic teacup for one trailer review and reaction. You know the drill by now. We're going to watch the trailer together. I'm going to stop it a lot. I'm going to restart it a lot. I'm going to give you all my thoughts while talking obnoxiously through the thing. So if you, if you haven't watched the trailer yet, go watch the trailer for Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. Then come here and watch the Beetlejuice Beetlejuice trailer with me. It's just really fun to say the title of the movie because uh, it's such a stupid title. But it's also brilliant. Okay. Let's watch the trailer for Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. Ooh. I love that we're getting the Warner Brothers logo in classic Beetlejuice black and white. Okay. 14 seconds in, and I just, I love everything that we're seeing. If you know me, you know that generally I'm not a fan of nostalgia pandering, but apparently I am, because this just sparked so much joy in me. I mean, we're getting three key settings here that were just so crucial to the original film. First, I mean, I think it's so brilliant that this trailer is opening with an aerial, like, overhead shot of the town. Because, of course, that's how the original movie opens. Granted, not of the town, but Adam's model of the town. So that's just a great throwback. Next, we see the girls' school that Lydia attends, at, that we see her attending at the end of the first Beetlejuice film. And, of course, the covered bridge where Adam and Barbara were unalive. And, of course, those are just the settings. I think the main attraction in these first few seconds is that we're getting our first look at Jenna Ortega as Astro who is Lydia's daughter. Now, I'll probably talk about her casting a little bit later on in the video, but if I don't, just let the record show. I think this is brilliant casting. And I kind of believe that the only reason this movie is happening, well, not the only, I think a big part of the reason this movie is happening is because of her. So, thank you, Jenna Ortega, for your career <laughs> and for having it lead towards me getting a sequel to a movie that is very near and dear to my heart. But anyway, when I first heard that she was playing Lydia's daughter, I thought that is absolutely perfect casting. And I had a very distinct idea of what she would look like in the role. And it wasn't that. I'm struck by how, I guess, normal, for lack of a better term, her costuming is. I fully expected her to be in the same realm as Lydia and Delia from that original movie. But she has such a contemporary Gen Z, Gen Z? Yeah. Gen Zer look to her. And... I personally kind of love that. It also brings up a couple questions because 
she's not wearing the school uniform that the other kids are wearing at that whole girls school so it makes me think that she doesn't go to that school it also makes me think that maybe she doesn't even live in this town so effectively that kind of makes her a fish out of water both i guess within the town and also within the family i mean we know that delia and lydia still look as epic and hot topicy as they always did so for her to be a little more subtle i guess in how she dresses and how she expresses herself i feel like there's something to unpack there within the family dynamic but overall what i appreciate with the first few seconds of this trailer is just the simplicity tim burton has become a brand unto himself just with a visual style that we're all familiar with i pressed play on this trailer and i fully expected to be like immediately treated to seeing some kind of stripey thing unfurling but the relative mundane quality of these first few seconds, it's just, it's very true to how the original Beetlejuice film opened when we were introduced to the world of the Maitlands. And that was an excellent way to set the stage to make it that much more impactful when we moved into Burton Land, you know, the land where the stripey things unfurl. Anyway, we're off to a good start. Let's watch on. Daylight come and we want to go. It's so good. Oh, it's so good. So at the time of recording this video and at the time of this trailer coming out, the day before today, they released two images from this movie. One of them was of Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice, and that was great, but it was what we all expected. The image that thrilled me even more than that was this, seeing Winona Ryder back as Lydia, Jenna Ortega as Astrid, and Catherine O'Hara, Canadian legend. Oh, we love her in this country and in the world. Catherine O'Hara back as Delia, as well as this guy, who we don't even see in the trailer, but it is apparently Justin Thoreau playing a guy named Rory. Who is Rory? We don't know. Just purely going off of this image, I feel like he's Lydia's husband, Astrid's dad, or stepfather, and that's purely because he's dressed like somebody I think Lydia would marry. Stepdad? Because I think that would add an interesting parallel to the original movie. You know, you had Lydia having to deal with it, like accepting a new stepmom into her life. And so if Astrid is dealing with a new parental figure in her life, I don't know, it just kind of, it's a nice mirror to the story that Lydia had in the first film. And it also opens the door for them to sort of explore narrative possibilities that were introduced in the Beetlejuice musical, where of course Lydia spends the entire musical mourning for her mom, wanting to go to the other side to find her mom. Maybe they're going to borrow from that as the setup for this movie with Astrid? Who knows? We'll see. There's not a ton of plot information, but there has been a lot of emphasis on the fact that this is a family-driven story, and there has been a lot of attention given to the fact that this movie is bringing together three generations of Dietz women. So, no matter what, if you put Winona Ryder, Jenna Ortega, and Catherine O'Hara together in anything, I am going to watch it, and probably everyone is going to love it. But, going back to that whole family story, clearly, they are at a funeral in this scene. Now, we don't know whose funeral, but I think we can pretty easily figure out whose funeral it is. <laughs> and I think it's safe to assume that this is Charles Dietz's funeral. The reason I think that is because, well, first of all, we know for a fact that the actor who played Charles Dietz is not going to be in this movie, or probably any movie, ever again because of real life reasons. But it also works so well for him to be the character that is killed off. I suspect the movie is going to be about Lydia coming home for her dad's funeral and bringing her daughter to her hometown for the first time. I feel like maybe Lydia was estranged from her parents and maybe even the Maitlands for one reason or another. So this is likely the first time that Astrid is going back to her mom's childhood home. And if you pair that with my earlier theory that I stated about how maybe Astrid is mourning the death of her dad, there's a lot of opportunity for plot there. And that also gives ample opportunity for Winona Ryder as Lydia to break into a musical theater number. Hey dad, 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 I need a little help here. I'm probably talking to... Let's keep watching. That was a Beetlejuice the Musical reference for those uneducated swine watching this video. Mr. Tallyman, tally me banana. Daylight come and we want to go. Okay, this right here is why I believe that the story is going to revolve around Lydia bringing Astrid to her childhood home for the first time, because clearly the attic is untouched, 
Astrid has never been there, and, like, the model of the town has seemingly not been interacted with for quite some time. So it begs the burning question, where the bleep are Adam and Barbara? Charles not being in the movie, that works. That makes perfect sense, and it's actually the ideal catalyst for a plot to, you know, bring everyone back together. But Adam and Barbara not being in the movie? That, that's tricky territory, because the entire first film is about the fact that Adam and Barbara cannot leave their house. The first Beetlejuice movie is about a couple that wants kids but cannot have kids and then they tragically die before they can, you know, take any further steps to try to build a family. And then it's about them developing and building this beautiful blended family with the Dietzes and then they kind of become surrogate parents to Lydia. It's just, it is such, such a beautiful story. Now, who knows? It's entirely possible they're going to pull a Spider-Man No Way Home and just surprise us by throwing um, Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis into the movie halfway through and people will be like, whoa, and then they'll start screaming. But I, I honestly don't believe that's the case. You know, Gina Davis has said that she's not going to be in the movie. She even expressed the fact that her and Alec Baldwin look older now because they are 30 years older and their characters as ghosts, in theory, probably shouldn't have aged. So... I don't know, I think that's probably something that the filmmakers had to work with, just the absence of Adam and Barbara. So it begs the question, how are they going to justify it? I've seen two theories floating around the internet. One, that they're just waiting in the afterlife, in that waiting room, because as we know from the first movie, people can be waiting there for quite some time. Or, they were exorcised. Like, not like exorcised, but like, Power of Price compels you, exorcised. And as much as I love Adam and Barbara, I really hope they were exercised. There is just too much emotional investment in those two characters to write off their absence in this movie as, oh, they're just waiting at the DMV. For them to be gone, it needs to be a painful absence. Now, I don't think Charles and Delia would have had them exercised, so I feel like maybe Otho or... Was it Robert Goulet? Was he the boss? Either Otho or one of those other people that witnessed the Beetlejuice shenanigans. Maybe they sent in someone to officially send Adam and Barbara, you know, to the Lost Souls room. That's death for the dead. That would be enough to cause an emotional rift between Lydia and her parents to justify her leaving and starting her own family elsewhere. And then that's why she comes back for this movie to happen. Let's keep watching. Okay, Okay, I know it should only been a few more seconds, but it is just so great to see Winona Ryder coming back as Lydia. Lydia is such a great character. I'm thrilled that we're going to get to just catch up with her, see what she's been doing with her life. And going back to kind of my theory as I'm piecing together what I think the basic plot is going to be for this film, she's running into the attic. Astrid's not there. She has that look of horror and recognition in her eyes, like, oh no, my teenage daughter is about to get mixed up with my poltergeist almost was ex-husband. You know, that old story. <laughs> Let's keep watching, because we're about to see the poltergeist almost ex-husband. The juice is loose. Oh, it's so good to see him back as Beetlejuice. And the really beautiful thing about Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice is that it's a role he can return to now, 30 years later, 30-ish years later, and he can play as exactly the same. Well, the voice is still there, the look is still there, and what really thrills me here is just what looks like a lot of practical effects, like the really eerie lighting coming up from underneath, the colored lighting, him raising up out of the model. The thing I love and find so exciting about watching the original Beetlejuice film is just how many practical effects they had. You know me. I'm not a fan of CGI, and a lot of Tim Burton stuff recently, or at least in the past 10 to 20 years or so, has kind of moved towards being very CGI heavy, like Sweeney Todd going through the streets of London looking like it was a PlayStation 2 video game, didn't love that. If we can return to his basics of just creating incredibly exciting visuals with practical effects, oh... Oh, you'll have my heart. You'll have my heart and my soul and my money. I can't wait. 
Let's keep watching. All right, now I don't normally watch these trailers through to the end credits, but I did in this case because I was curious to see who was responsible for the screenplay, because a lot of the attention has been going to Tim Burton, but Burton seemingly didn't write this. It was written by, by these two guys, uh, who, based on my favorite website, Wikipedia, are the writers and the showrunners behind Wednesday the TV show. And when I heard that, it made me slightly less excited for the movie, but only slightly, because, listen, I'm lukewarm on Wednesday, the TV show. I don't dislike it. I just didn't love it. I didn't find it that overly engaging, but I do think there's a lot to be said for the fact that this movie is bringing together the showrunners from Wednesday, Jenna Ortega, the star of Wednesday, and Tim Burton, who of course developed and directed Wednesday. So to me, that's indicating that this is a team of creatives who love working together and enjoy working together so much that they decide to combine their powers to reinvigorate one of the most beloved, cherished Tim Burton movies of all time. The fact that that happened, and they were able to bring back Winona Ryder, Catherine O'Hara, and Michael Keaton, to me that's a recipe for success. I think this movie is going to be like a beautiful synthesis of Tim Burton's original muses and collaborators, as well as the people that he's found success working with recently, so... <sighs> I'm just really excited for this movie. <laughs> and the title, it's so stupid, but I love it. But makes me wonder, if this movie does well, does that mean that it's going to be a trilogy? Are we going to get Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? And if we do, what would that even mean? We all know, you say the name three times, he appears. Will the third movie in the trilogy just be like, you summon a live actor to your house to act out the third Beetlejuice movie for you? Oh! the possibilities they're endless anyway uh with that friends this concludes yet another episode of teacup 41 let me know in the comment section down below are you excited for beetlejuice beetlejuice and what was your favorite part of the trailer and if you want to be the first to know when i release more videos talking about movie trailers disney shakespeare funko pops cats make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already and if you haven't subscribed already it is so easy all you have to do is click on my face Thanks for joining me today, everyone. My name is Matt, and I have two degrees, and that's the T, cup for one. <sighs> Deo! Deo!